Welcome. I'm Dr. Samaria Cobra. This is your first time viewing or listening. Uh, I am uh, a licensed therapist. I've been in the field uh, 16 plus years, actually more like 18. Uh, I'm a published author. I've written close to 60 books. My goal is 100 between now and the next five to 10 years. Uh, no, I can get there in 10. I don't know about five. We're going to work, work or we're going to try it, right? And I also am an entrepreneur. I am the CEO and founder of a uh, private practice located in Greensboro. It's called Kingdom Creative Counseling. Uh, I am a little different than the average therapist and that incorporate faith-based principles to bring about lasting change. Today, we're going to talk about fear. Um, fear is uh, a master spirit, and it is something that uh, everyone struggles with at some point in time. I am convinced of this. Uh, fear is not easy and fear has a voice. And so I entitled this uh, Letting Go of the Voice of Fear. We talk about different voices that one may follow, but you also have to understand that fear is a predominant one. And I don't really hear people talking about it. When I say the voice, I'm not necessarily talking about hearing a voice or if you have a psychotic uh, disorder or something like that, which is also rooted in the spirit of fear. I'm talking about those who just struggle with a fear. And one thing I will teach you is that um any and everybody, great, small, and them all, at some point will struggle with the spirit of fear. And I want you to identify it and know that fear has no control over your life. I want to point out some resources to you. I have this wonderful workbook. Uh, I wrote this in 2018. It is, it's a workbook journal. So it, is, it gives you some information, gives you some scriptures. Uh, this is available at my website or on Amazon. It's called Fight Fear with Faith a workbook journal and it'll bless your life. It has a, literally it is a journal, but it has scriptural meditations and things that you can do to begin to process your fears and how to let go of them. So make sure you pick up a copy of this book. I'll post a link below if you're watching this via my uh, social medias, okay? And if you're watching this via Instagram, just go ahead and click the link on my website <laughs> and go and purchase your copy. There is also an accuser and uh, it'll accuse you, it'll accuse the brother, it'll just accuse you, tell you what you're not, what you're not going to be, who, how other people perceive you. And uh, and and fear is a false narrative. And so uh, there is still a free ebook that is still available. You can go to my website, or again, if you are listening to this via YouTube, you can simply, um, you can simply click the link and you will be delivered a free ebook called The Accuser. And then you can find that uh, in the link below. But if you were again watch this any other thing, just go on my website, right? So Holy Spirit, we thank you for that. Let's talk about this. Now I was uh, uh, meditating on scripture and I had been meditating on this uh this scripture and I found the voice of fear uh where you wouldn't expect it. And uh, I think it's really important that fear will present itself in places and spaces again where you would not expect it. Excuse me. Um first Samuel 16, so the first verse and I'm going to paraphrase it because I'm not going to uh, uh, be here long. y'all. It's been a long week. <laughs> so I almost canceled this little one, this teacher, but I'm trying to be consistent. So I'm, I'm going to hit it and quit it today, y'all, okay? Hopefully you can't see how tired I am in my eyes. But anyway, First Samuel 16, right about the first verse, you know, King Saul um, was rejected by God because of his behavior and because God had not selected him, the people had selected him. And uh, God goes to the Samuel, prophet Samuel, who was to anoint another king and says, how long are you going to mourn? How long are you going to be in regret, deep pain and sorrow over what I have not allowed? And um, he said, listen, verse one, he says, I want you to go to a man named Jesse's house and I want to you to anoint a king. And he says, I have chosen for myself. How many know that God does know how to choose uh, for a king? And I want you to go to Jesse's house. Mind you, doesn't tell him who's going to who he's going to anoint, but he said, I want you to go to Jesse's house. God knows how to find you right where you are. Amen. That ain't the word. That ain't the message. That, that ain't the message. I'm just telling you. I'm just talking. Y'all. I'm just talking. Verse two, this is where we find fear presents itself. Whenever you get direction from God, a clarity from God, this is really, really important about how great you're small. And this is why I pointed this one out because I can go all kinds of places. I can go to Gideon and we can go to, you know, uh, uh, Psalms all kind of, and find fear somewhere in the mix. But we don't uh, understand how oftentimes great people who have great anointing can still suffer or struggle with fear. And so after he, after God gives Samuel, prophet Samuel, this proclamation or this direction, excuse me, instruction, he, uh, Samuel replies, wait a minute here. Verse two, uh, King James Version, and Samuel says, how can I go if, watch this, um, fear always says, what if? What if 
uh, rejected? What if they hear? What if um, uh, he, uh, now I'm going to use the word differently so I won't get my stuff blocked. What if uh, my life is threatened because of what you have called me to? He says, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will. And I'm, a, I'm not going to say the praise in KJV because again, we all know social media is not block your stuff. You say certain words. What if Saul ends my life? But the Lord said, and take, and the Lord said, take and heifer thee and come to sacrifice to them. This is where fear presents itself. In the eyes of a great man who is going to anoint a king that God has already proclaimed. I want to tell you, whatever God sends you, he sends his protection with you and you don't have to fear. So even though, watch this, it is important, even God, even when God gives us instructions about what we should do, what we should not do, where we should go, who we should connect with, who we shouldn't, it does not mean that fear won't be present. What I love about the, the uh, prophet Samuel is that Samuel still was obedient despite fear. So fear is a false narrative, but it is not a reason to stay stuck because I feel fear. One of my greatest struggles, believe it or not, has been fear, but I can honestly say it never stopped me. It may have delayed me when I was younger and immature. And even when I feel fear, and 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 because it still comes up or worry, it still comes up. It doesn't, you know, then I don't know if it's gonna go away, but it doesn't stop me. And I want to encourage you, don't allow fear to stop you. Once you face it, it's no longer fear. So Satan wants to attack us by the voice or the false prophetic called fear. What if this happens? If you don't do, there's some people trying to, if you don't do what I tell you to do, if you don't do this, if you leave this relationship, if you leave this town, if you leave this family, and they begin to speak word curses, you're never, you're never, you're never. And that is the voice of fear. Anytime somebody tries to hold you hostage over what their agenda is, they are a demonic agenda. Hmm. I wasn't feeling this way. With this. I wasn't feeling my first time, but now I'm already in there. I'm already in, honey. So again, fear is a false prophetic. It begins to declare what has not happened as if it were. But it's the opposite direction. It's what I dread. The prophetic is different. It means to declare the end of a thing before it happens. The prophetic is also the witness of Christ. I was just, uh, by the way, just give this one free. I was watching a brief reel by uh, a prophet, uh, 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 Ryan Lestrange. I believe he, I may be pronouncing Lagrand. I may pronounce that wrong. Sorry, y'all. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not trying to be offensive. But he began to say, what's the difference between a true prophet and someone who is prophesying accurately by a different spirit. He said the spirit of divination. Okay. Because real prophecy leads you to Christ. The spirit of divination leads you to themselves. And how many times people have we done relationships with people who begin to prophesy. And they maybe appear to be accurately. But it's a spirit of divination. They put themselves in spaces and places. God never ordained. See the enemy knows how to prophesy. He knows, he, know, he knows how to prophesy your elevation. He knows how to prophesy to you, deceive you. And he knows how to prophesy. Watch this. He knows how to prophesy to invoke fear into you. Prophecy is never pressure. Listen to me. Prophecy is not pressure. And I told you a few years ago, um, I asked the people, they begin to prophesy, God said this to me, God said that. And you, and they put me under all this pressure. God said this to me, God said that. And I begin this, and it, and it sounded real, oh, in the name of Jesus, God said it. I said, wait a minute. And I was, I, I'm all up, up uh, in the all, God said it, oh my God, well, he didn't tell me that, you know. And so put me under a lot of pressure. And then I, I went to God and I just kept going. Because sometimes when you go to God and pray, he may not always give you the answer when you want, but he's going to give you the answer, right? And uh, God said, no, I didn't, I didn't say that. So you got to be careful. Gotta be careful saying Holy Spirit said God said God ain't never say that. I don't care if it's a small one. You don't lie small on the Holy Spirit. Don't lie big. Just say I perceive. All right. So fear is a false narrative. 
<laughs> I was just listening to somebody. I think I won't repeat it. It was funny though. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it was the past. He said, "If you want, if you want to know what God," he said, "I think he said, if you want to know what God said, just go ahead and start telling people." Uh, or st- telling people stuff, and they'll begin to declare what God said. I mean, they begin to declare what they begin to declare and preach and prophesy what they what God's what well, hearsay basically is what I'm saying. It was funny. I I can't pronounce it, but you you, you get what I'm saying. So, uh, if it's really God, right? If God really spoke to you about me, right? He will confirm it with you without me having to say anything. By the way, this is why you got to learn how to hear prophecy and keep it to yourself. And if God told you something, He gonna it's gonna come as confirmation to me, right? But that's neither here nor there. We're not talking about prophecy. We're talking about fear. So fear is a false narrative. It gives you a false story. The vision, why this can't come to pass without faith, right? But watch the reason why our enemy uses fear because he wants to stop the vision from coming to pass. See, the enemy cannot technically stop your vision. He cannot stop your promise. But he can do is evoke fear and give you a and that false narrative into you so you stop it yourself. Remember, the, vi- the vision waits at a point in time, but fear has a voice. Watch this. It has a sound, and fear is the enemy of your assignment. You'll never connect with right people in right places, in the right promise when fear is present. So signs, watch this. I'm almost done. Y'all know it's quick. I know it's real quick, but like I said, I'm just, you know, I'm just, you know, work with me. That's all I got for you today. <laughs> Um, so a sign you stuck with fear, and one is a, a refusal to speak up in spaces and places where it is it is clear that you should speak up. You should speak up for yourself. Maybe God says, "Go speak to that person. Go, uh, go prophesy over that person. Go do this," and you and you don't do it because of fear of man. I want to give you an example. I told this on a reel recently, but for the sake of time and what we have, I'm gonna tell y'all again. So I was at a speaking engagement. Uh, a few years ago and um i remember i was there and there was one particular person in the audience and the whole time i could not read her face she was like this the whole time sweet woman because I, I actually met with her a little bit afterwards sweet woman but she was sitting there like this And so, you know, and everybody in the audience was like, yes, amen. But my eyes, you because you know when you when you speak it, you know me, I'm I'm a natural quiet person. Once I once I get good on going and and flowing and God is with me, I all that fear leaves, you know. And uh and but my my eyes kept focusing on her. Sweet woman, y'all. I just amazing person. I, Cause I said I met with her afterwards, you know. And so the whole time speaking, I, I hear again the voice of the enemy, not like like a not like an actual my thoughts, basically. Oh, you're no good. You're terrible. People are laughing at you. Look at it. She's bored. Get off this stage. Get off this stage right now. She's bored. You're terrible. She doesn't like you. What is going on with you? This is a mess. You know, the whole time. And I didn't realize I had to silence the voice of the accuser. So I did good. I was, oh, that's so good. And people asking for the PowerPoint slides. And believe it or not, the title of the message, believe it or not, I'm telling you that, it will get you. I was talking about overcoming fear. And here I am struggling with fear while I'm talking about fear. Ain't that something? So sometimes God had you preaching and prophesy, you just preaching and prophesy to yourself. I wasn't really preaching, I'm more of a teacher, but still, you get what I'm saying. And terrible, and, and you know, and, I was, and then people come after, oh, it was so good, it was so good, good. And I was like, okay, you know, and I was like, man, they're just saying it, right? So the woman who comes up to me, she said, listen, she said, come here. She said, that was so good. She said, thank you so much. It felt like 